think for a moment about these grand epidemics like the Spanish flu back in World War I. Now, ask yourself what was happening around the time that this grand sweeping epidemic which killed millions, what was happening? Obviously it was World War I. Now, what does that do to a, do to a, you know, a population of people when you've got the men all off fighting in war, there's barely any food, there's shortages in food, shortages in medical supplies, everything's, people are in this constant state of conflict and warfare. What does that do to a psyche of a population? It, it runs this, it, you know, we can, we can get into fight mode. We're meant to get into fight mode to defend ourselves from attacks. That, that's what we can do for a few minutes, a few seconds or a few minutes. And then what happens is after that attack is over, we're meant to calm right down. But when you're in a period, a long, many, many years of sustained warfare, what does that do to a psyche of a nation? What does that do to the emotional well-being of a nation? It lowers it because we can only be in fight mode for so long without weakening our immune system. You know, imagine if you're you're waking up and you're not sure whether you're going to win the war or lose the war. Imagine what that does to a population. And then you look at the Spanish flu, which was around the time of World War One, and it killed millions. It killed so many millions of people. But you look at what was happening to the people at that time. And in uh, the time of the Spanish flu in Samoa, where I'm, obviously I'm half Samoan, it killed it killed you know almost half the population of Samoa. But you look at that time. There was a time when Germany had been had colonized colonized Samoa before that, and then the uh, New Zealand government came and took over, obviously as part of World War One. And imagine what that does to the population of people when you've got a whole government transition, you, you, you're obviously, obviously still in that that servant mode with this colonial power occupying you. So I just want to talk about that. That's how, when we can look at global epidemics, we look at what's going on in, in the, the amount of fear in the world when these, these epidemics are happening. Because fear is definitely what lowers your immune system or my immune system when we're in constant fear all the time or in constant survival emotions like anger and you know it's like it's like we're fighting a mugger every single day 24 hours a day that's what it's like um, whereas you know our survival emotions like anger and, and fury and you know all the, that that power gives us the power to fight off a potential activity when we're angry when we go into fight mode all the blood goes from our central nervous system into our arms and legs ready to fight a foe or to run from a foe that that's instinctively in us that's part of our how we are but we are a tremendously amazing creation you and i are miracles we can heal anything but what we've got to do is got to start shutting down those residual survival emotions which have built up over many many years of trauma so we would have had primary trauma back in childhood or in the womb and then what happens is we have experiences with our with our parents with our peers school and so on through life which stack upon this and what happens is when people get seriously ill seriously sick in later life with whatever it is the gamut of whole you know the whole range of, of, of possible diseases out there it's because they've they've accumulated this this stack of traumatic emotions and it's what it does is the, it's the equivalent of an epidemic on the body system the body shuts down its immune system because it's so busy ready to fight off this next attacker this next attacker remember I always say the unconscious mind doesn't know the difference between something vividly imagined and something that's real so if you're in a state of fear over potential boogeyman in the future or what's going to happen what's going to happen to your family what's going on in the world if you're in that potential state of fear you're putting your body in fight and flight mode which is that survival, and engaging those survival emotions which shuts down the immune systems momentarily to fight off a threat even if that threat is imaginary and that's what happens with the subconscious mind so how I work is I, I, I work with the person to go back heal the past go through all their past trauma start shutting down those survival emotions until they get to a point where their where the body goes back to homeostasis it can the immune system comes back online it can start repairing the body and healing your body and that's how people can heal and you notice after these these world wars you know that happen or these global epidemics there's usually afterwards immediately afterwards a massive surge in in uh, population as if you know people once it's all over, once the war is said and done, and people are like, oh gosh, we can relax now. They go back to life, they go back to doing what they normally do, you know, which is having families, prospering and, and you know, building communities and that. So this is how it works. So this is what's going on with you and me. So I just want to share that about talking about, you know, what's going on with global epidemics. And the next one you hear, you know, there's a global epidemic in this or this virus or this. Ask what's going on in that country. What is happening in that country? Is it terrorism? Is it economic uh, collapse? What's going on that's creating these emotional conditions? which people are becoming a part of. This is Roger from the Healing Warrior Program. You can heal your life now. Have an awesome day.